I'm ready. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our Q3 IA Startup Showcase. I'll be your host today, Eric Kapanis. I'm the COO here at the International Accelerator. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to join us for our Q2 showcase, feel free to check it out on YouTube. Uh, we focused on three exceptional founders, all making major, major disruptions in their field. And this showcase is not gonna be any different. We, um, we're coming to you from all across the globe. We have Vasu, who will be representing Pig Time. He's the CEO and founder. He's, he's joining us from India. We have Stuart, who is the CEO and founder of Simple, who is joining us from the UK. And last but not least, we have Diego, who is representing StratTech and joining us from Guadalajara, Mexico. So we've got some exceptional founders that, uh, that we're very excited to be presenting today. And we also wanted to start off with sharing a little bit of news about uh, some recent developments for our accelerator. So one of the most exciting things that's happened since our last, uh, since our last showcase was we have added four new portfolio companies. They represent Greece, India, Brazil, and they have some very, very interesting platforms that we're super excited about to be joining our portfolio. They won't be presenting today, but you'll be seeing them in future presentations and showcase. And I'm sure you'll be seeing uh, updates on our websites about them and, and social media posts about them as well. So, so be sure to follow them. One is called My Call Sheet. They have a, a platform for the photography and professional photo shoot management. AutoDig, who's disrupting the auto buying experience. Docket Run, who's doing retail analytics to machine vision. And Ever11, who is disrupting the quick serve restaurant analytics industry. Angelos, do you want to give some updates on uh, some, some news from our existing portfolio company? Um, sure. Um, thank you, Eric. Um, my name is Angelos Angelou. I'm the founder and CEO of the International Accelerator. Good morning, good afternoon. From wherever you may be listening today, um, I have some exciting news to share with you. First and foremost, uh, one of our most successful companies, Cooks, received a significant investment from uh, Vista Equity Partners, which is one of the largest uh, private equity fund in the US. Unfortunately, the terms of that deal will not allow me to and disclose the exact terms, but let you let me share with you that everyone is really, really happy and excited. Um, Skooks uh, also wins the HR Techs Awards uh, for Best Innovative or Emerging Tech Solution. Uh, they're doing extremely well. I think they're approaching $30 million in revenue. And with this uh, investment and support from Vista Equity Partners, I think they're gonna add a lot more people uh, on top of the 150 people that they have and continue to grow their spectacular growth. Next. Um, B Readers. Um, B Readers um, has raised over a million dollars right now uh, being in our uh, program, while being in our program. They have won a 250 million uh, thousand, <laughs> I wish if it was million, uh, <laughs> $250,000 prize from uh, Federal Williams Black Ambition Initiative. Um, and uh, also they've been uh, accepted into the AT&T Aspire Accelerator Program, which uh, gave them $100,000 in investment and another $25,000 in a grant. So um, we have uh, significant expectations of uh, bee readers and, and their attraction and how that may grow in 2022. We expect for them to reach a, re a level of revenue of 3.5 million this year and, and hopefully double that uh, next year. Um, I'm also excited to announce that um, their founder and CEO just arrived uh, in our office actually an hour ago from Chile. Uh, he went there to uh, get his visa and our organization was instrumental also in getting him the O-1 visa that he wanted to, to have. And, and so right now that 
big challenge of whether he's going to be admitted to the U.S. as um, on a track to become uh, a U.S. citizen eventually after he becomes a green card holder. Uh, it's done, and, and uh, we're very proud of that. Next. Well, uh, Strap is going to be presenting to you uh, already, so maybe uh, he can uh, speak to that as well. But um, I have never seen more traction from any one of our portfolio companies other than Strap, who has a very engaging social media campaign and marketing. They are everywhere, every week. I get um, the uh, notices, notifications from my social media. They are quite active on um, uh, Twitter uh, and other events that they participate. Uh, regularly, Diego is a speaker at major uh, interviews on national television or local television. So if you want to follow Strap, be, uh, please connect with them on LinkedIn and you'll be getting updated almost on a weekly basis about something happening. And we're also glad to know that um, Diego just came back from Africa where he visited his uh, venture capital firm that put uh, uh, quite a bit of money in, uh, in his company to the tune of $1.3 million. So we're very excited about uh, the social impact that he's having in, our, uh, in the world with his startup, uh, which is focused on helping visually impaired people re read, uh, I guess, uh, lead normal lives, as normal as that can be, without the use of canes. Uh, so it's a significant uh, improvement on technologies that are out there, but I believe Strap is uh, the best one out there and hopefully will be coming to market with a product by the end of the year. Um, I believe that's it, Eric. Is there yep. anything uh, else? Perfect. So nope, you, you covered it all, Angelo. Thanks so much. So without, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and, and get right into it. Uh, just to give you guys an idea of, of today's format, we're, uh, we're going to be hearing from the founders from you know, 10, 15 minutes, uh, partly pitching. Some of them have some demos to do. Um, and this is an interactive presentation. So go ahead and if you have any questions, drop them in the chat or in the Q&A section of the webinar. Our, uh, our lovely host, Vivian, will also be participating and asking the founders the questions as you guys, as you guys ask them. So, so feel free to, to drop anything in there that you'd like them to answer. So our first presenter um, has done amazing things in the B2B scheduling software space. So right now, he currently has uh, over 250,000 enterprises using his platform all across the world getting thousands and thousands signed up every month. And his focus is not just on scheduling, but payments and CRM, team management, asset management. So I'd like to introduce Vasu Thurley, the CEO and founder of PickTime. Vasu, take it away. Uh, thank you, Eric. Thank you for the intro. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Uh, and thank you, Aya, for the opportunity. Uh, let me share my screen. So hi, uh, I'm uh, Vasmitra Terli. I'm the founder and CEO of Big Time. Uh, we have created a solution uh, to help businesses manage time efficiently. <clears throat> According to the statistics, 50% of the small and medium businesses fail uh, in the first year and over 95% of them uh, fail in the first five. Some of the major problems faced by the small and medium businesses are inefficient time management, Time that needs to be uh, spent in catering the needs uh, of the client is eaten up by the administrative work, uh, uh, like answering calls, helping clients making appointments, and reminding them for the upcoming appointments. Uh, double booking. Lack of proper system leads to double booking. Uh, customers uh, resulting in angry clients. No shows. Customer no shows uh, cost businesses a lot of money, resources and time. According to the data, the average uh, no-show rate varies from 12% uh, up to 80% in different business settings. And uh, reduced efficiency. 
juggling between uh, multiple tools to keep track of businesses and bookings reduces the efficiency and wastes uh, precious time of the business owner. So uh, that is why we created QuickTime, an online booking platform that helps businesses uh, uh, the reduce, uh, to reduce the hassle of manual scheduling. QuickTime uh, can be used by uh, hairstylists, nail salons, doctors, uh, lawyers, photographers, consultants, schools, and colleges, irrespective of their scale. And here's the solution. We have built a 24-7 online booking page that helps business owners to automate the bookings in the hours which they choose to show. Their customers can make bookings with them at any time from anywhere in the world with just a few clicks. This completely eliminates the never ending phone calls and let business owners do what they love the most, tending to the customer needs. A visible online calendar. With big times a visible online calendar, businesses can easily see their free or busy slots and avoid double booking. Automated reminders. Businesses can uh, completely automate the process of reminding uh, customers with their automated reminder notifications process. And all of this data is stored in the cloud. So all the customer and appointment information is completely and securely stored in the cloud. Hence, there is no need to worry about missing information. QuickTime has uh, everything a business needs under one roof from scheduling bookings to managing customers and team schedules, enabling payment and invoice management. This not only saves a lot of money to the business owners, but also saves a lot of time by streamlining the administrative process. QuickTime has its presence in over 160 plus countries and uh, dominant in US and 30 more countries. QuickTime has over 250,000 businesses on board over 1.5 million bookings happen uh, on the platform uh, every single month and uh, an average of 15,000 new businesses on board every single month. QuickTime also ranks uh, in the top 1% of the websites in the US uh, and the worldwide. And we have achieved all of this uh, without uh, spending a dime on marketing. It's just organic growth. And uh, here is one of our screens. Uh, this is our main interface, uh, which shows the business owners uh, their bookings for the day. And uh, this section uh, where business owners can get information about what is happening in their business at a glance. And uh, this is the online booking page, which the end users see uh, from the customers. Uh, they can choose their uh, service, date and time, and also make up, uh, payments in advance. QuickTime has uh, tons of features and some of them include the uh, ability to sync with almost any third party calendar out there. Uh, for example, uh, Google, Outlook, uh, iCloud, Office 365, Microsoft Exchange, and almost any other third party calendar. And uh, automated reminders and notifications, uh, class bookings, multiple location management, payments, invoicing, team and customer management, asset management to help businesses manage uh, rooms and equipment, uh, strong reporting, and a booking widget uh, on the customer's website, and tons of other integrations. The total market value in this segment is over 120 billion. And we focus on SMEs, uh, which account to a market share of 57 billion, uh, where we are planning to capture 10% of it. Uh, we have four business models like uh, monthly subscription, booking commission, sponsored listing, and an enterprise plan. And uh, we are launching our first uh, uh, business model monthly subscription uh, um, by the end of this month. These are some of the reviews our clients have given us. And uh, these are some of the awards and mentions. Uh, we have been awarded at the, as the software with the highest client satisfaction rate and also as one of the fastest growing software in this segment. Uh, we have raised over $750,000 so far and we are looking for an investment of $350,000 uh, in which we have already raised $150,000 and now we are looking to raise uh, $200,000 uh, uh, before closing this round at a, at a 15 million cap and a 20% discount.
most of our competitors uh, in this industry provide a solution for appointment bookings only. And we at QuickTime want to provide an end-to-end -end affordable platform that has uh, everything from appointment booking, class booking, room and equipment management to collecting payments and even raising invoices. We want QuickTime to be the one-stop solution by providing everything a business owner needs under a single platform. And here's our team, like uh, we are a team of 15 and here are some of our core members. And uh, thank you, uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer. Awesome, well, thank you so much, Basu. Vivian, uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, we do. Uh, so uh, Suni Paul is asking, what is the current ARR and how long does it take to go live? Uh, I'm sorry, Vivian, like, uh, can you repeat that? Sure. What is the current ARR and how long does it take to go live? Yeah, uh, uh, so far, like we've been running peak time for free uh, for the last couple of years. And now we are planning to go to premium uh, by monthly subscription by the end of this month. And we are uh, projecting uh, uh, in um, uh, by the end of 2022, uh, around uh, 10 million ARR. And we are, apart from this, we are already running uh, some ads here and there uh, in the public page of the uh, booking pages, uh, where we make uh, uh, around 100,000 uh, currently. Uh, but still, that is not our mainstream revenue. Our mainstream revenue is going to launch, uh, the business model is going to launch this month. Great. Um, another question is why uh, the white big time is so strong in the Philippines. Uh, yes, uh, big, big time uh, is very strong in Philippines. Like, actually, to uh, a lot of Philippine organ uh, government organizations use uh, big time uh, on a daily basis. Uh, uh, we see some police department and uh, we see a lot of other government agencies use uh, uh, big time in Philippines. Uh, another question is how many subscribers are on the current free platform? How many users are there in the freemium uh, plan? Yeah, we have uh, categorized the whole thing into the users into three segments. One is the business owners, another uh, is the staff of the business owners, uh, and another one is end clients for the business owners. So we only consider business owners as our customers uh, or as users. And right now uh, we have uh, to, uh, around 250,000 uh, business owners onboarded onto the platform. And I have a final one. Uh, what is your competitive landscape? Uh, somebody mentioned Calendly, for example. Yeah, uh, so we do not consider Calendly as our uh, primary competitor because uh, we see that Calendly is uh, primarily focused on uh, professional or uh, consumer-based uh, scheduling. Uh, we are, uh, maybe we can put it this way, like we pick them is like Calendly on steroids. Uh, like big time is mainly for the business owners. Uh, we curate all their services uh, and uh, their classes or meeting rooms into a single uh, mini menu for the business. So where their uh, clients can pick a service and uh, pick it a free time slots of any team member or any staff uh, in the business, and then uh, just pay online and schedule the meeting or schedule the service. Um, Vasu, I have a question and that is, um... How many users do you have from the U.S.? And um, secondly, what are some of the biggest names that uh, are using your platform already? Um, uh, we have uh, almost 50% of our user base is from the U.S. Uh, so if you put it into numbers, it will be around uh, over 120,000 businesses are from the U.S. alone. And uh, uh, U.S. Uh, embassy uses uh, big time. The U.S. consulate uses big time in uh, a couple of countries uh, like Dominican Republic, uh, France, Greece, and uh, even Romania. Um, uh, and uh, there is another one, Walgreens uh, in Delaware. Uh, in, in Delaware State, Walgreens uses big time for uh, scheduling vaccinations and even COVID testing. Uh, and there are uh, even now uh, Cathay Pacific Airways uh, and. Uh, Singapore airport. Uh, there are like many enterprises, uh, even Red Bull uses big time in uh, scheduling interviews. And, and what is your penetration in schools? I mean, a lot of governments and schools now are using you for scheduling uh, appointments with customers. 
Yeah, but we uh, out of uh, the number of businesses who sign up for peak time, uh, half of them, almost uh, 40 to 50 percent of them are schools and colleges. Uh, from parent-teacher meeting to scheduling classes, everything happens on uh, peak time and even uh, scheduling uh, rooms uh, in the schools. Uh, but right now, this is off-season for schools. But yeah, I mean, there, there is a lot of schools who use peak time uh, uh, yeah. on a daily basis. Thank you. We have one more question, Eric. Do we have yep. time? That's so uh, will you soon engage in a marketing activity or do you think organic will be the only way to go? Um, so far, uh, the, our uh, only strategy in marketing, we have done, uh, we have played on, the, we have done various, we have played various strategies to grow. Uh, yeah. So, so far, what we have done is, is everything organic uh, from uh, uh, we haven't touched uh, anything inorganic or paid uh, so far, um, but we will be going into the paid strategy very soon uh, by targeting uh, the right audience uh, uh, through different social media channels and through search engines. Um, I do want to emphasize one thing, and that is, um, although Vasu mentioned it, he went through it very quickly. Um, most of the customers are attracted through viral uh, marketing, I guess you could say, um, Vasu's big time is ranked in the top 1% of all websites in the world in web traffic, as well as in the US. So with millions of eyeballs on his platform, he hasn't had to go through paid ads necessarily to attract clients. And currently he is growing by 15,000, 15, 15,000 15, new businesses per month. Um, obviously, as uh, he mentioned, going into the premium model, he's going to have to start doing some ads uh, so that he can take away clients from his competitors to pick time. Yes, that's right, Angelus. Yeah. Thank you, Angelus. Well, Vasu, great job. Uh, thank you for presenting. And um, if you have any further questions or you want to follow up with Vasu, his information is up on the screen there and you can get a hold of us uh, here at IA2 and we'd be more than happy to, to make any introductions and set up meetings to facilitate some more discussion. And on that note, Vasu, thank you. Yeah. I know yeah, it's thank getting you, late. And, uh, thank you, IA, for this opportunity. Thank you. You bet. I know it's getting, I know it's getting late there. So yes. go ahead, rest up and, and uh, get back at it tomorrow, man. Okay. Um, Eric, could I have two minutes um, because I realized that I not, did not really explain who we are as an accelerator and what we do. I just wanted to take a couple of minutes before our next presentation. Absolutely, uh, Angelo. Go ahead. Thanks. Um, well, the International Accelerator uh, brought the first companies to its portfolio in the spring of 2016. So we're about six years old. Uh, we focus exclusively on foreign-born entrepreneurs. Uh, we have 20 portfolio companies. We've had a couple of very significant exits, even though we exited them partially because we wanted to uh, keep enough powder um, for future growth and exit um, on those companies at a much higher valuation, even though a couple of our companies recently received over $250 million valuations. Um, we uh, had a small fund, experimental fund of $3.2 million. We've returned over $9.3 million so far to our investors. And by the, by the time we exit our uh, portfolio of uh, 20, uh, I'm sorry, 11 companies that are on the fund, in the fund, uh, we will probably return another 40 million to our investors. So um, we've been exceptionally successful with a great track record, which gives us a lot of optimism uh, of raising a $50 million fund later this year. So I hope uh, many of you that might be interested, uh, you're always welcome to invest in each one of our portfolio companies, but possibly also look at investing in, in our fund. Uh, we're pretty excited um, to be supporting uh, foreign-born entrepreneurs and enabling success stories out of them and making them, making them multimillionaires. So, so that is the intent here for them um, and for our investors. 
that have invested in, uh, in these companies as well as the international accelerator. Thank you. Great, thank you, thank you, Angelus, for that overview. And so our next founder is coming to us from the UK, Stuart Bose. He's the founder and CEO of Simple. And I personally love this company because I can truly resonate with the pain point that he's solving of trying to eliminate the arduous process of invoice management and invoice factoring. So Stuart, please take it away when you get a chance. Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> Sorry, just bear with me. Can you see my screen, Eric? Yep, you're good. Okay, apologies for the delay. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Stuart Bose. Um, I'm the founder of Simples and we're developing a platform that automates invoice and payment processing and at the same time provides invoice finance at the click of a button. So the problem that we really focused on is the problem of manual invoice and payment processes for business to business uh, transactions on account. Um, and this diagram really illustrates that problem. Every step that you see here represents a human touch point and a manual task. Um, and as you can see, uh, this problem affects both the supplier and the customer, so both parties to the transaction. And a direct corollary of, of this problem is the fact that the invoice finance customer experience uh, is generally very onerous. Um, invoice finance providers are not connected to the customer. Um, so they need to vet the supplier and validate invoices. And this results in um, onerous application processes uh, as well as uh, uh, delayed transaction processes. Uh, invoice finance is a particularly uh, appropriate form of finance for many businesses. Um, it's very underutilized uh, precisely because it's so inconvenient. So we believe at the heart of these problems is um, really the fact that accounting systems have no way to talk to each other. Um, so our solution is a network solution that integrates with accounting systems and that allows them to share information and it allows us to keep supplier and customer ledgers synchronized uh, as they should be. And the result of that is that we can comprehensively automate these processes. So you can see from this diagram that only two human touch points remain. That's the approval of the invoice and the payment initiation. And that's because those are, are really key financial controls. They control the flow of funds out of a business. And so they're not desirable uh, to automate in, in most cases. And in addition, because we're connected to the customer, we can uh, automatically validate invoices and pre-approve invoice finance and therefore make it available instantly. So why is this possible now? Well, it's really the advent of cloud accounting systems and the APIs that they incorporate, um, which allows us to connect to accounting systems in a multilateral way, uh, which was not possible before uh, with on-premise systems. And that enables the establishment of this type of network um, where um, we can leverage online distribution. And, and by that, I mean our users can um, connect their accounting systems to our platform online in a couple of minutes. Um, and it's those two things um, um, in conjunction that, that really um, 
raise the prospect of uh, viral growth. So our concept is inherently viral because our users are incentivized to onboard their trading partners um, in order um, to automate their processes with them. Um, it's the online distribution model that really enables that. So you can see from uh, these figures that these are very large markets, um, but it's really the, the invoice finance market that um, we think might um, have the most potential uh, for our particular concept. So competition falls broadly into two categories, um, electronic invoicing, uh, which has been around for a very long time. Um, these are complex, um, expensive solutions. They're simply not viable for SMBs. Um, SMBs comprise 99.7% of the business population. And so electronic invoicing solutions can't um, achieve a wide adoption. Uh, OCR solutions uh, means optical character recognition. Um, so these solutions are really focused on the invoice capture aspect of the process. So they provide uh, limited um, automation. In contrast, Simples is um, um, priced to um, be affordable to the very smallest of businesses, but at the same time provides um, a full network solution and full automation. So in terms of where we are, our, our network solution is um, actually live. Um, our invoice portal um, is um, dev complete and that will be going live in the com coming days. And we're in the process of developing uh, two other features, um, our invoice approvals feature, um, which allows invoices to be approved um, um, on, a, on a mobile device uh, so that managers can approve invoices on the go. And our batch ACH payment feature, this allows our users to pay their suppliers cheaply and easily um, using ACH payments um, and allows uh, uh, supplies and invoices to be paid in one operation rather than um, one at a time. So those three features um, in, in green and orange are uh, the one-sided single player mode features that are not reliant on the network. Those are really crucial for our go-to-market strategy. Um, so we're planning to launch um, those features in October, and then we'll be focusing on building out our platform in respect of further integrations with more accounting uh, um, uh, packages. So we've identified 20 um, accounting systems, which are the major accounting systems in the US market that we need to integrate with to give us over 90% coverage uh, of the market um, in the US. So our revenue model comprises subscriptions and uh, invoice finance transaction fees. Um, our subscriptions are um, pricing is designed to optimize for adoption. Um, so as a network um, solution, we, we feel that's uh, the appropriate strategy for us. We plan to partner with an invoice finance uh, provider um, and enter into a revenue uh, sharing arrangement with them um, in terms of uh, transaction fees. So this is what our revenue projections look like. Um, so the key assumption that underpins these projections is that one of our um, users will onboard on average five of their trading partners. And so that's really the viral coefficient that uh, you see there of five. Uh, the team is comprised at the moment of myself and Dustin Clark and uh, we have worked uh, very extensively together in the past, so our working relationship is well tested. Um, we have between us over three decades of relevant experience uh, designing and implementing financial systems, including accounting systems. Um, it's important to note uh, that Justin is not a full, uh, it's not full time um, 
at the moment. So um, his full-time participation will be contingent on uh, funding. Um, in respect of his, um, you know, uh, skills and qualifications, I think his uh, credentials uh, speak for themselves. So we are seeking to raise uh, two hundred fifty thousand to five hundred thousand in pre-seed funding um, to enable us to accelerate our progress and and the build out of our platform. Okay, so now I will um, attempt to give you a brief demonstration. Um, I'll have to keep it brief because we don't have a lot of time. Okay, so this is the accounting system for um, a supplier, AP McCoy's Building Supplies. Um, and if we take a look at their customers, we'll see that they have a, a customer who is Bob the Builder. And we can um, create a new invoice for Bob the Builder. And I'll do that just by copying an existing one. OK. So invoice 1101 has been created. Now, I must apologize because QuickBooks won't allow me to have two systems open at once. So we must uh, log out of this accounting system. We'll log into the, the uh, customer's accounting system. And if we take a look at vendors, This is the account for AP McCoy's. And there we can see invoice um, 1101 has automatically fed through into the customer's accounting system. Okay, so that happens in real time. Um, so if we mark that invoice as paid, okay. So that payment has now been created in the customer's uh, books. We now take a look at our supplier system. If we look at the account of the builder and locate our invoice, uh, there it is, level one, and that invoice is now reflecting as paid. So that payment has been um, booked and accounted for uh, automatically. Um, so now, if we have time, uh, Eric, let me know if, if we don't. Well, yeah, I'd actually like to hop right into the Q&A. I think that there's a lot of folks that are interested in your platform and kind of want some, some background information on you and then also some of the integrations you have. So, so Vivian, why don't you share some of the questions that we have already coming in from the audience? Sure. Let's just start uh, with your background a little bit, uh, some of your previous experience in working in the field and some more info about you. Yeah, sure. So, so my background going back, um, way back um, is actually um, an accountant, so that's my profession. But I spent most of my career, uh, career um, really, uh, as I said, designing and implementing financial systems within um, the financial services industry um, in in City of London. So um, investment banking um, and uh, broking. Um, so that's my uh, background prior. To, um, prior to um, venturing into um, the tech startup world. Great. And uh, what about your competitive landscape? Uh, is QuickBooks your competitor? No, no. So QuickBooks is not a competitor. So our, um, our solution connects uh, accounting systems together rather than competing with them. 
Um, so, so QuickBooks is not a competitor. We integrate with QuickBooks. Um, in the future, we will integrate with, um, you know, as I mentioned, um, all the other major accounting systems. Mm -hmm. Could you please share some uh, more integrations, some more software that you integrate with? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, at the moment, we integrate with uh, QuickBooks. The planned integrations are these ones. So um, these are the 20 um, accounting platforms that we've identified that will give us over 90% coverage of the US market. So that's what's uh, currently planned. Great. And is there any way to also manage your inventory through, through Symbills? Does it, uh, is it visible? Can you manage the inventory through your system uh, on the supplier on each side? No, so you you so the answer to that question is no, not at the moment. Um, so typically, your in inventory would be managed by your accounting system, um, but we would be automating um, the um, invoices and payments that impact that inventory. And going forward, we will also incorporate um, orders, uh, so purchase orders uh, and sales orders, etc. To automate those processes because those are also um, uh, really applicable to the network solution um, because it's uh, um, essentially information flowing between uh, the accounting systems of buyers and sellers. So um, orders is uh, something we will we'll be incorporating um, in due course. Great, thank you. I don't have any more questions for now. Awesome, perfect. Thanks, Vivian. Yeah, yeah Stuart, uh, we, you know, we've been using Stuart's platform here at the International Accelerator for several months now, and it has, uh, it certainly made my job easier with tracking all the invoices and payments and everything like that. So I would say it's probably cut, cut my time down in QuickBooks, probably 75, 80% uh, at a minimum. So um, we're going to go on and uh, move on to our next founder, who is uh, joining us from Guadalajara, Mexico. He just got done doing a tour in uh, in Africa and Nigeria, right, Diego? Yes. Showing them all the great things you're doing. So, so Diego has uh, has an amazing device that that's basically giving blind people uh, a vision into into the world. So, Diego, uh, great present, great great uh, great product, great mission, and we're very much looking forward to your presentation. Thank you so much for for the warm intro, Eric and Angelos. Really appreciate. Can you see the main screen or the presenter screen? Yep, you're good. Great. Hello, everyone. Um, some of some of you already know me, but for the ones who know, I'm Diego Royal, CEO of StrapTech, and I want to start by let, letting you know that every five seconds, someone in the world lost their sight, according to the World Health Organization. And while a lot of technologies has evolved a lot during the years, some others have not. For example. Here is a car from 100 years ago, from 1920s. And this is a car from today, right? Big difference, like now it's electric, we have autonomous car, we have a huge development in 100 years on the automobile industry. But then some other technologies has not evolved. For example, this is a white cane for blind people from 1921. This is a white cane, for first white cane ever invented. Probably you know this cane because this is exactly the same cane blind people and visually impaired people use today in 2021. 2021, in a century, nothing has changed. And in a world with a such rate of change of force, this still stops being precise and became outdated. And this, and people are, you may think that people are still using it because it works a lot, but it's, it, it does not. Like right now, visually impaired people are still independent, are still dependent from other people and to ask, they need to ask for help. They are unable to explore the world. They have all the core of the body, all the upper part of the body uncovered that the head, which is such important like piece we need to take care about is not covered by the cane. And the cane is only one point of, of feedback. If you don't tap it, you don't have the feedback. And while you're tapping on your right, you don't have any coverage on the left. So it's a such simple tool on the outside that it's so complex to use the inside, like to use it by as a customer. And is, it does not solve all the necessities of a blind person. And no one has ever tried 
to do something of it, to evolve the game. This is some, this is something like corporations or people have, have tried to do and fail, or or they have never just put attention to do this. That's why we got to the work to develop a solution that can sense the world. Ladies, gentlemen, please meet Strap, the world's first total replacement of a white game for the blind. This is a world-class and unique technology. So this is a wearable device you wear in the chest, and it enables the blind people to move around independently. They now don't need to ask for any help. Like it's, it's designed to vibrate with a haptic language feedback when an obstacle of any type is in front of them, in the head area, in the chest, on the sides, staircases, bumps, holes, or floor, animals, people, everything you can imagine. And it will alert and prevent the visual impaired user from potential collisions. And it does this by having a bunch of sensors, a huge array of sensors, all around ultrasonic LiDAR sonar sensors that are looking at real time to all of the points. Like you have complete coverage of all points of your body. Uh, and we are able to take anything so blind people can not just not collide with things, but find things and be able to do new activities that previously they are unable to do. We have a bunch of, of features, but our main features is, of course, the, ob the obstacle detection. We have a warning, a hazard detection feature for any any obstacle you cannot avoid, but you need like to stop. This way, if you're going to go to a pool or to the edge of a stage or to a huge hole or whatever, we will let you know in case you're in real danger. We have a huge feature that blind people are loving, which is a straight line navigation, because a blind person, since they don't have a visual reference point, they struggle a lot to, to walk in a straight distance, in a straight line. So they just press a button, the device will trace an imaginary line or lane uh, uh, on the floor, and they, it will notify to the haptic feedback again when they are off the line and how to correct themselves. So this is the way they can be walking blocks and blocks in the city without having any problem with persons getting to the sidewalk, to the cars, or any other thing. I mean, our haptic language feedback, it's, it's world class. This is a language we created. We are not trying to tell you words nor phrases. It's all through patterns, through, through rhythms and animations you already unconsciously familiarized with. Uh, the, that's what, how we let you know. We have an, a range of 10 different haptic creators and with a combination of, of all of them, we're able to, to notify the user and, and communicate complex pieces of information in a really simple and intuitive way. And we have right now more than 250 early adopters and beta testers uh, with 300,000 cumulative hours of use and test. And they are loving it. People are shouting they need a solution for all the problems that the game cannot solve. Uh, we have, for example, Victor, who, who said, with this, I feel like a normal person, as if I could see again, as Iron Man, or Cynthia, it goes with the market's demand because right now the blind people are looking for more autonomy and developing ourselves. They want and they need a solution so they can have access to go to college because blind people right now are doing homeschool. I mean, COVID situation changed everything, but if they want to go to an office space to, to, to go to their office walking, they can do this alone for the first time without needing to ask for help on the go or to have someone be making company for the visual impression all time, all day, all days. So our product does everything. They are indeed several startups and companies, assisted tech companies have tried to solve some of the pain points that King has, so, such as a head obstacle detection. So all, everyone has tried to do smart canes, attachment to the canes, accessories while you're using your cane, but no one has ever questioned the cane itself. We believe, and going back to my first example on the cars, strap technologies is, is, is like the evolution what we saw on the automobile industry, where when Henry Ford went outside on the market and asked what they want for mobility, everyone was asking for stronger horses, quicker horses. But this guy didn't hurt the solution the user wanted to provide. He heard the problems, and such we did. So instead of stronger horses, he deploy the car, a locomotion machine. And where you, uh, when we are doing just the same. We're doing everything what the king does and not everything what the kid does not. Another competition tried to solve one problem. For example, just detecting head obstacles. And that's it, while they have the king. Or just detecting side obstacles. Or just navigation in a straight line. Or just navigation in the city. We do it all. We take a, we take a, a, a 
task to do a such complex tool on the inside that it's so easy and intuitive to do to, to use on the outside. So for the blind, it becomes like a sixth sense. They don't need to think about the device. They don't they need to think about what the device is selling to them. But after a week or so of using it, we have found that this becomes like they, start, they just react towards the haptic animation. They don't need to think. So it becomes like driving again. When you start to learn to drive, you are looking at everything and with a lot of consciousness. But when you have two years driving, you don't even think about driving. It's just the same. Right now, our technology is world class. It's unique. So right now we have detected six, six core patterns, already, uh, five of them already drafted. We already filed some of them, we already have the filing number from the patent office. Uh, and all these patents does, doesn't just have a use on assisted technology, but also on other industries, just like in the military industry, the gaming industry, the mining industry. And this can have huge application in other industries. We already know we didn't put in slide and other industries, we don't have ever think about that. So our technology has a bunch of applications. Think of, think of our technology just like driverless car technology, but for humans, which is not a copy paste technology all the way around. It's we need to get to other technological challenges that for example, Tesla don't need to do because on the street, there are rules on the street. The car, you put a sensor on the car and it's always going to be on that same spot on the car. But people, we have way different bodies, volumes, heights, and on the, on, the, on the street, on the sidewalk, there's no rules. People are running, people are walking, people are looking at the moon, people are all with a lot of pressure, people all are doing a lot of things. So what Tesla does is predict everything that can happen because there are rules, we cannot. So this led to a huge technological problem we were able to solve already. Uh, are talking about the markets, the assistive technology for the visual impaired market is of 6.25 billion. And you might think this is not a huge market and you are right. Like just uh, another startup before had presented huge markets, but we need to take in consideration. What startup do you, do you, do you come to your mind when you are, uh, when we talk about last mile delivery startups, FinTech startups, e-commerce e startups, they are trillion dollar markets, but there's a lot of competition. A lot of big players are really settled on the markets and they are just trying to get whatever chance, whatever small percentage they, they, they are able to. But on these markets, there are no big players in the field. Assistive tech startup, you probably have none on your mind, maybe one or two and there are small ones. So there's, it's a high growing industry with no big players in the field. So we are able to, with the right, with the right strategy, to get and position ourselves at the, at the first monster, the first corporation that's going to take the lead on this market. And we are not also on the assisted, tech, uh, assisted technology for the visual impaired market, but we also have other revenue streams, such as a recurring revenue model stream, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And we also have a uh, and to have revenue streams for data, data analytics and, and retrieving of data because everyone is taking, retrieving and analyzing data from the digital world, but no one is doing it for the real world. So think of, we don't use cameras, we only use sensors, which is another technological challenge we took for strategic uh, decisions and for the scalability of the technology. But think about strap as cameras and circulation. Where when a, when a blind person goes through a sidewalk and it's a new bump or a new hole in the sidewalk, we will, let, we, we, we will know in, in 24 hours when the person goes again to their office space right there. And we can sell that information like to Google. So they can have like maps about everything in the world. We, have a, we can map indoors. We can retrieve a lot of data from the real and physical world. So now how we do money, how we make money. First is like through selling the hardware. The hardware right now is going to, is going to be at a MSRP of $750 of an introductory price. We aim to, to make it down as, as the years goes. And we have the subscription fee, the subscription revenue stream, where there's some features that are so specialized and so niche features and not everyone is them. So we are charging a monthly, a monthly fee so that a person can, can go and, and use these this niche features. For example, an athlete. If an athlete, I, I, I don't know how to, how to say it in English, but an athlete that jumps obstacles, like on the Olympics, if, if you're a trainee on that and you become blind, now you cannot play that because you have no idea where the obstacle is. So if you put, if you put strap and you pay $5 a month, so we can, we, you, you can use this feature, you are going to be able to rejoin your training. And just of this example, we can have a huge different kind of, of uh, niche features, just as, as you are looking at the, at the screen. Regular traction, 
Today, we have reached more than almost 400 pre-orders, more than 300,000 uh, sales momentum on, on, on money. People actually put their credit cards and we charge a fee. So people are buying a product, but it's not in the market yet. And they are giving us their credit card information because they want it. So this communicates a huge product market fit. Our customer acquisition cost right now it's $10. $10. You can see on the right side, upper right side, our, our orders and how they are they are constantly growing orders month by month. And our conversion rate is huge. Last in May, we accomplished a 9% conversion rate, uh, which is amazing. And we need to take into consideration that this traction was accomplished in five months with a three-person marketing team, which the three of them were part-time and with only a $2,000 monthly budget. So taking that context in consideration, this is amazing. And regarding our unit economics, with a 5,000 volume manufacturing batch, the product cost is of $125, $27. And we're selling it again for $750. Or we have a manufacturing partner with all the agreements signed who is in charge to manufacture our device and do all, all the final assembly, testing, packaging, and sealing of our units. We already did the first, we just finalized our first uh, manufacturing test run. We're doing one more that in, in 40 or 50 days. And after that, we're going to the mass mass production. The technology is ready. Right now, we're just taking care about all the manufacturability of the device, all the supply chain, the inventory, bill of materials, and all that optimization, jigs, fixtures, testing processes, and all this. But as, as we, as, uh, as uh, the unique economics tell to us that as we grow the, the volume of the manufacturing, the price goes low. And we can make our, our manufacturing price as low as $65, taking in consideration marketing expenses, amortize uh, on, the, on, the, on the volume. We have raised so far, a seed, we closed a seed round of $1.5 million. Uh, and right now we're raising a 5 million Series A to accelerate growth. These are going to be start using since January of 2022, and it's going to last for between 12 and 18 months. And all the focus of this is to have a huge go-to-market, a strong go-to-market, increase sales, focus on the traffic on a website, uh, content production, uh, increase our sales conversion rate, position ourselves in the blindness ecosystem, release a software platform for the recurring revenue stream, and we're developing an, a, a, a new unit, an affordable unit for emerging markets. Because India and Africa has a huge amount of, of blind people, they, but they cannot pay $750 for a, for a, for a unit. So we're, it's just like the iPhone SE, where there's still an iPhone, to performance, just cheaper. So we're releasing one unit there. We're releasing Strap version 2 with cutting edge technologies for the, for, for the uh, first world market. Um, to continue our R and D uh, on our three main technologies, which has huge way to grow and to develop world class and world use technologies, which is our obstacle detection, the haptic language feedback, and straight line navigation. Uh, I'm finishing this my last last slide. And regarding the team, is a right mix of passion and experience. We have Natalia Fries as marketing director, who has 12 years of experience and working for international brands just like Sarah, Formula One, Shake Shack, Nuvank. Uh, and have, have helped startups to go to, to the, go to market 70 times in his in her career. We have Ben Engen, who is looking at this uh, program right now, uh, a CTO. He was former senior director of the engineer development at Samsung, managing 900 engineers and billion dollar budgets. And he's leading all our technology. Uh, myself, who I'm a tech inventor, uh, I have a master in business and technology. I have been studying robotics and electronics for 12 years. Uh, and we are a 25% company with headquarters in Austin, Texas, and a development office in, in Guadalajara, Mexico. And well, in Strap, we think that uh, independence is a human right and not a luxury. The fact that as we speak, a blind person is trying to do something and they need to ask for help because one person can and another one not, independence becomes a luxury. And we believe it's a human right. So deploying this tool where we can reduce the independence gap for people can be amazing. Together, we are changing how blind people explore the world. Tickets start since $500,000. Thank you so much. And I would love to open the forum for questions. Awesome, great job, Diego. Thank you so much for that presentation and, and love what you guys are doing and, and love that you're making it affordable for everybody. So V, I think we got a couple of questions. You wanna go ahead and get, get those going? 
Sure. One of the questions that has already been answered by Angelus, actually, I'm just going to read it out loud. It does not need uh, an FDA approval because it's a consumer product. Uh, somebody asked that question I thought of mentioning. Yes. And um, uh, what TRL your technology is? Uh, we have a question from somebody in the audience. That's a great, great question. I in my last deck, Angelos kind of won't let, let me that lie. I usually put like a, a thermometer with a trolley level. Uh, right now we are we are like the technology is ready, it's really mature. We are already able to do uh, non 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 controllable or non I don't know how to say it, like non 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 a controllable user experience so we can send units right now to that to the user i don't remember at this moment which tier level is i think it's maybe that 10 or the the 9 or the 10 but it's ready like technology is working we have a couple couple uh dozens of units in the office and right now all the focus is on the manufacturing manufacturing reducing price optimizing costs on that side and right now we are filing um uh, fcc and c certifications which we don't need FDA because we're not medical device, but we are a consumer electronic, which the computer you're looking at this at this uh, webinar has FDA as well. So it's only normal and standard uh, electronic certifications we're following right now. Great. Great. And I got one question, Diego. I think you and I may have spoken about this earlier, but, but talk to me about some of the, the redundancy and the safety that you built into this. Sure, uh, Ben Ayman, our, our CTO, has put a lot of attention that redundancies because it's really important that we not like let uh, a, a blind person on the go on the street like die. Like a sensor not working, battery is going to die. So your battery life is of two full two full days of use. And the redundancies and security protocols are really amazing because each amount of time the device is always on the background making a, something we call self-test. Self it diagnoses itself. It can know if a haptic equator is off, it has a short circuit it's not working. It can know if, if any sensor is not working correctly. So what happens if a sensor is not working correctly, we turn off the sensors and we can manage to adjust the, the cone of view, the field of view of our rest of the sensor. So for example, if the if the chest sensor it's it's in charge to look at your body and all the all the all the front is not working, the side sensors will increase the field of view so now they cover your body as well. So this way, if any of the sensors fail, we have another sensor or sensors will will uh, change their performance and their behavior to be able to compensate that. So the person is able to go with the same security to a secure space uh, wherever they are. Great, thanks, man. Uh, one more question. How many patents have been granted or applied so far? Uh, uh, four of them already. Not granted. Uh, we have the filing number. We have all the confirmations. We already protect us. It's already sent. But we don't have our certificate yet. Great. We filed them a couple months ago. The last one we filed it last week. It's a 45 uh, long patent. We use a lot of neural networks, a lot of visual recognition, non-camera visual recognition. So our technology is really, really unique and really huge. Perfect. Well, everyone, I think that uh, I think that wraps it up. Diego, great presentation. I don't think we have any more questions from the audience. So I appreciate you being able to uh, to be a part of our showcase today. Um, so we went over just by five minutes. So that's that's not too bad. Um, I just want to leave you with a couple other things. Feel free to go ahead and check out our website. We update it almost daily with news about our portfolio company, news about our fund, news about um, new companies that we're adding or we're talking to, also events. Follow us on social media. We're always having community events. We're always in the Austin startup ecosystem going to events and happy hours. So hopefully some, sometimes you guys, can, uh, you guys can make it out and see us and talk to us about, us, uh, about our companies and and uh, get to know us a little bit more there. Um, our website is iaccelerator.com. We're, uh, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. So give us a follow. And uh, we're hoping to see you guys at our next showcase event, which will probably be at the uh, beginning of November. Uh, Angela, do you have anything you want to uh, add at the end here? Well, I want to thank um, everyone for attending. If you have any questions, feel free to touch base with myself, with Eric, with uh, George Kafuros. 
and Vivian will be more than happy to make introductions to any one of the founders and CEOs of our portfolio companies, including those that uh, presented today. And I hope that uh, we can attract your interest uh, as investors, as potential clients. And please spread the word that the International Accelerator is doing well and thriving. And we are selecting top level entrepreneurs from around the world and scaling their business um, throughout the United States and also um, creating the conditions for them to get uh, lots of funding. Typically, we attract up to a million dollars worth of investor investment capital through a safe instrument. So if you want to participate, even a fifty to $100,000 investment, hopefully one day can be uh, providing a huge return for each one of you. Thank you. Awesome. Well put, Angela. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining in. Have a good rest of your day and a great weekend, and we'll see you in November. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you.